Alright guys, here we are at the start of VTOL VR and I'm just going to go straight into the map editor and you can open an existing map but in this case we're going to make a new map and we're going to use that height map that we just saved. Um, you got a couple options here you can play with. I'm not really going to go over the archipelago or the mountain lakes very much. Um, I think it's all pretty self-explanatory. Um, you mess with the size and yada yada yada. Um, so here for the map, same thing, size, you can choose the uh, biome type, um, really up to you on the kind of mission you're really going for. Um, border type becomes important because it obviously dictates what the edges of your map are going to look like. So with the um, coastline kind of that we just got, um, it, it's impossible to have um, part water edge and part um, land edge from what I can see. It's kind of one or the other based on the way it currently works. Um, so you'll kind of see what I mean in a minute and I'll switch between them to kind of give you the visual. Uh, but for now we're going to leave it on water <clears throat> and I'm going to leave everything else as it is. And I'm going to choose the height map. Oh, Give me one second while I move the image I just took into the directory necessary for the editor. Alright guys, if you want to use the editor to do anything, you got to make sure, and here's a key tip, whether you're using the mission editor or the map editor, move everything into the VTOL VR editor resources folder um, so that it has access to whatever it is that you're trying to use inside of it. It is a very key important thing. Um, so we're going to move in the height map that we just took and then we're going to use this to pick what we want to do. Um, so then let's do that now. And then I believe it was under height maps, and it was the edge of Brazil. And so, <clears throat> again, based on the height and all that other stuff, it just depends on what it's going to generate for these edges for these rivers and all that other stuff. I went a little high, so it's going to lose a little bit of that detail. Um, but you can just play with stuff, it's really up to you. Um, but now we'll go over kind of how the border type really messes with the map when you generate it. So if you'll notice, there's water on every edge. And the edges where I had land, it can stay kind of close to the edge, but it's still not quite an edge. And if you change to hills, you'll notice that it puts a hard border around the edge of where the water would be. And then the same thing happens if you're to choose coast. It just, um, I, can I affect it with this? Do to regenerate? So I'm not exactly sure what the coastlines given me here but <clears throat> I'm still not 100% sure on how to mess with all this stuff so I normally just kind of stick to water um, so I either go for a island type map or I go for a non-island type map if you're using height maps it just seems to be the way it works if you're looking for something that's more of a coastline um, I, you might have to go one of the other routes but I'm not really too concerned personally uh, about whether I can make um, a true coastline or not or there's a little bit of water's edge here because if I was to make a coastline gameplay map I could still very easily set up uh, rigs out here, uh, oil rigs or some tankers, put stuff on the edges over here and treat it the same way. Um, and <clears throat> depending on how large you make the map, it'll be, 
you know, a, a big deal versus not a big deal. Um, in my case, where if I'm generating something that's almost 200 kilometers by 200 kilometers, um, and I focus my mission efforts more over here, um, it's not really going to be a big deal that all of this is, you know, not a coast. Um, but again, I'm just getting into the details about the way I feel things. So it's really up to you on how to manage all that. So we're just going to go with the water border type and we're going to get into um, what we're going to call this. And I'm just going to call it the same thing uh, that we did for the file name and just generate it. Alrighty, here we are. And I apologize if I am um, clearing out the throat just kind of regularly. Um, just kind of slightly getting over something at the tail end of it now. Um, so I apologize if I if you semi-frequently hear that, um, such as about right now. <coughs> um, but as you can see, generated something decent looking. Definitely, uh, in my opinion, could use some tweaking. And this is the part where I'm going to kind of quickly cover um, what I do to kind of, in my opinion, make a map a little bit better. Like for example, when you zoom in a little bit over here, there's a lot of just divots and pits and just small things that make if you're trying to do anything over here and put roads and all that other stuff or build a city um, uh, that kind of does flatten stuff out a little bit but it's just it's a little weird in my opinion or when you look at some of the mountainy areas like if I were to see this here that that would be fine because if I was heading towards the mountains the, the bumpiness to increase it just it looks more natural to me um, but then there are times for me where some of the mountainy or hilly type areas don't look so well, such as here. Um, and that's a sharp spike, as you can see, and it just, I don't know, kind of looks weird. Um, but, so, it's just, again, you have to gauge your personal preference on what you kind of think looks strange. I think if you're to see kind of a mountain range like this, while it still kind of looks cool, to me, I think it would look a little bit better if it were to be softened up. And let me show you what I mean. Um, we'll go over the tools really quick. So um, I can put stuff in here um, at the time of this. Um, just pick a base. There's a couple of base types. Um, and this just puts the base permanently on the map. Um, you should definitely do this. Um, I you can do it in the mission editor too, but for some reason I just kind of always put my bases here when I'm making a map because it just kind of like goes with the layout of what you're doing. Um, so a couple of choices. Um, coastal, uh, you got a dock you can put in, um, some individual buildings that you can put into a town if you want to actually kind of choose the specific makeup of how you want your town to look. Um, but there's actually a town painter too. Um, so road options, um, four lane, two lane, pretty easy. Works off of curves. Um, set a midpoint, set a second point. Kind of a, it, it works really easy. Qu very easy to get a hold of and the hang of using. Um, so I'm really not going to cover the road stuff very much. Um, and then terrain. So here was what I was mentioning about a minute ago. So if you're to zoom in. Um, you can actually kind of choose what you want to do for all this stuff, um, make it a little bit bigger. And so here you can kind of dictate how you want the town or town area that you're painting to generate. And here's how it works. So you just kind of start painting and then if you click and hold lightly and just go over a quick area, all of this is rural because you just gave it a quick scan. If you're to zoom in, you're going to see a bunch of farm-like type areas. And so um, at first I thought I was trying to pick the specific, like what I was doing, but in order to up the level of uh, city-ness here, I guess, <laughs> uh, just click again or click and hold. And then you're going to start to see that it's going to start increasing the type of density of, I guess, building there so after a while you're gonna start seeing big buildings pop up and so now you'll notice that it's just it's very easy to paint towns this way so rather than sit there and pick individual buildings or whatever you can I don't know my recommendation is this but um, 
so it generates all kinds of awesome stuff you're going to see stuff up here with um, tops for helicopters to drop onto already and stuff like that and it just I don't know I like the randomization that it kind of deals with um, but if you want to get in here and put anything like again these big objects and you can pick something specific um, so I'll go downtown and I'll go to one of these big like twin tower type things and then you can just kind of try to get in here and fit it wherever you can um, and so there will be a big tower here <coughs> But I just kind of paint the city um, as, again, this game's more focused on the air and all that stuff. Just small details definitely matter if you're making missions where you have to pick people up and stuff like that. But I think, you know, exact city layouts and all this other stuff aren't necessarily a big deal as long as you've got objective points. Um, <clears throat> It's, I think, the only really thing that matters. Anyway, I think it's pretty cool that he included the town painter so I don't have to build towns. Um, and then the big one that I kind of want to go over, oh, really quick, to remove towns. Here's a big one. So what you can do, and this is what I do with a lot of the train stuff, and I'll kind of show you where some of the tips and tricks come in. Increase the radius size, increase the strength size, and then you'll notice about the shape that if I'm all the way here, the right it's very tiny so it's dense in the middle and it's very loose everywhere else versus if I go to here it's just dense everywhere so all I want to do is remove all the towns that I added really quick so hold shift click the mouse again and everything just starts disappearing except for the one big building that I added because that's not controlled by the painting mechanism um, and then afterwards I finish that I can go back to my objects click my tower and just simply delete it but the big terrain thing, and managing terrain, making it look a little bit better, smoothing it out, be more realistic, um, you're going to have to play with it to kind of just get your comfortable feel. But when it comes to managing just good general strategies for kind of fixing some of this, I don't know, um, sometimes it just, this stuff looks not too bad to me, like necessarily here. Um, but as you start to get into some other areas where it just starts to look a little weird, like I don't like these like, uh, I do not like these sharp mountains here um, next to the kind of more softer ones over here um, and even over here. So just you got to start playing with stuff, the raising and the lowering. So make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. It's easy to forget to click shift and raise terrain. Um, so the strength here is really going to be the key factor about what you're doing. Just uh, you want to make light touches. Obviously, you don't want a lot, but this is just playing with this. The difference of what it does. You can very quickly make mountain ranges, or very quickly make holes down to the sea level if you're trying to build some kind of hilly area. So just be careful in playing with things. And again, shape comes in handy when trying to adjust the area of density. Um, so for me, when I kind of do this type of work, you're just going to have to gauge each area individually for what you're trying to do. So um, in this particular case, I'm going to use the flatten tool and it works great for smoothing this exact kind of thing out because if you move your mouse around too quick, um, it's not very effective. If you move it around too slow, you get more of just the flat area which you don't really want so if you kind of find that you actually move it at again you're going to have to play with your strength option but if you kind of move it at a medium pace um, you'll still have your hills there I think my strength is a little high but as compared to what they were a minute ago in my opinion like that little bit of a softer edge and for this one over here like I'll kind of it just it makes it not look so bad it's just that sharpness is, <clears throat> it just doesn't look very good to me. Um, so if I can't get that to be softer, I'll just kind of flatten it. So you're going to have to kind of really decide on how much detail you want to mess with in these mountain ranges. Like this whole thing over here just looks weird to me. So I kind of move in a circle a little bit and adjust it. And you can still see that it's got some hills and stuff, but it just... It just looks a little smoother in my opinion. I don't know. Maybe I'm being particular here. But 
anyway so then a lot of this weird stuff over here it just it looks odd it just looked better if it was probably some of these bigger mountain ranges but again I'm just this is all my personal opinion um, so in this particular case I'm just going to increase the radius to be a ton um, I'm going to increase the strength to be quite a bit as well um, but I'm going to leave the shape at what it is because I don't want it to be here and give me that super hard fine edge um, the leveling I want to be more um, <clears throat> dense in some spots and a bit softer in others so um, just kind of quickly oh that's still very strong um, and just move it around and kind of take out some of that weird edginess so now the whole area in my opinion while yeah it largely looks the same it looks a little bit better but now let's smooth out some of this bumpy area that sits right here that just looks weird so here we want to lower our radius a little bit so that it's not half the size of the like continent and then here maybe increase the strength a little more again and then make the shape a little more dense and you'll notice if you kind of go slower and this is the part that's just the little tip and trick about what you're trying to probably trying to manage and so if you're trying to manage that smoothness you'll notice this the area I just went over let it generate I mean it just looks it looks a lot better in my opinion you can see this hilly these hilly areas next to it and then you see this so it just looks so much better in my opinion um, to get a lot of that out of there so again how much time you spend into putting the flattening of these details and making things look better it's just again you're in an airplane um, you're either dropping some stuff on a building or sending missiles or you're a uh, dog fighting and there's not a ton of emphasis um, on I would say the minor details of the environment but the whole, whole overall environment looks good still so that's why it's just really up to you and how much effort you want to put into all this stuff like I think this just looks terrible like I like I don't even want to look at it so I go through and I spend time fixing this stuff because I'm more particular um, and in my opinion it's always just the small details like this that kind of make what you're doing a little bit better um, back to that whole kind of adding music note yeah you can just add some campaign custom messages and all that other stuff but out of that whole area that was just there um, why isn't it zooming oh I'm zoomed all the way out already um, it's just so much better in my opinion um, so I'm only going to do so much of this for the example map um, I think you guys pretty much get the idea um, you just got to learn to finesse the controls a little bit and really just put the, the, the light touches or the hard touches where you need them to be um, like in this mountain range same thing I don't want to I don't want to spend too much time playing with this whole mountain range because while yeah overall it looks kind of good a lot of this jaggediness over here is just a bit too jaggedy so same thing here I don't want to spend a ton of time so I'm gonna do something that's more big and grandiose like this and fix some of that stuff but instead of holding my mouse down I'm just actually gonna click it a bunch repeatedly so that I don't go overboard um, and just hopefully kind of when it smooths out when it renders it just looks a lot better um, and if I don't care I can move on if I care still I can get in here and still mess with some of this stuff so you can still get, keep the mountains while still fixing some of this again spend as much time as you want here but um, it's all the the big um, knowing when to increase the size and make it huge doing the dense shape versus coming in making it down like this and really knowing this is the area I'm really affecting versus the area out here where I'm barely affecting so you can see if I'm here those mountains on the left they don't change much I'm here very drastic so it's just I've said it like three or four times now how much effort you want to put into it so we'll see you guys in uh, the mission editor with uh, some some awesome custom maps um, and Hopefully we'll see some of your guys' custom maps up on the Steam store, or Steam Workshop, sorry. 
um, for other people like me to use for their mission designs because not everyone's going to want to spend time in the map editor so if you make something feel free to share it with the rest of us.